Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Bajan and this is my account SoCal Expeditions. Now, you'll notice that I'm in my backyard today and that's because I wanted to talk about the solo stove bonfire. And I can't take this out in California and use it in any of the national parks right now because wood fires are not allowed, only propane fires. So, I wanted to talk about this while I can and tell you guys a couple of the pros and cons that I've seen. But, before we jump into it, let's go ahead, get some wood in here, get the fire started, and then we can go ahead and talk about everything that there is to know about the solo stove bonfire. What I've noticed honestly works best is an upside down fire. So just grabbing everything that you need, four pieces of firewood, stacking it, and then placing your fire starter in the middle. A couple things that I've also noticed about the bonfire is that it's either that it starts up in three to five minutes and it's good to go, or it's getting suffocated, choked for oxygen, and it's not getting enough air down below since there's no way that air is getting through the sides. So, as a result, I'm still being smoked out by a barely starting fire, and this thing is not even ready to go. So as I was saying, sometimes it's really easy to get this fire going, and then other times it's literally like that, where if the wood's not dry enough, if it's not the perfect conditions, and if your fire starter is not igniting the wood, you literally need to blow air into it and get oxygen going, because again, the sides are keeping any oxygen from coming in. So that's one of the drawbacks that I've had personally with this, and especially trying to gather, gather wood from around my campsite, and use that to burn, especially if it's a little bit wet or moist, it's nearly impossible to get this thing started. Another thing I always get asked about is, how is the heat output? Is this something that's gonna be comfortable when I'm sitting out there in 40, 50 degree weather? And I'm gonna tell you, yes, as long as you have boots on with good socks, because if not, you're not gonna be feeling any heat down in your feet at all. So yeah, I live in California and most of the time it's warm, but I want a fire pit that I can bring with me when it's cold outside. And unless I'm standing, I'm not really feeling that heat. So at this position right here, sitting back, I can feel a little bit coming towards my face and I do feel my upper body being warm. But anything below my ankles, my shins, my knees, nothing at all. So even if I touch down below here, this is cold to the touch. Yeah, if I start coming up, it gets a little hotter, but down here is very very nice and cold so unfortunately you're not going to be keeping your feet warm and that's something that I wanted when I was going out camping I want something that keeps my feet warm because I'm sitting there usually cold and that's why I have a fire so this isn't exactly what to buy if you're going out camping and you want to keep your feet warm you want to keep your knees warm you want to keep your ankles this isn't the right stove this is just the truth of it so now you'll notice that I had to remove the top lid to put a couple new pieces of wood in. And the reason being is because unless your wood is pretty short, there's no way it's going to fit in here and be below the rings, which is what you want for that secondary burn. And I will say it does do a secondary burn whether or not that the top ring is on here or not, but you still want your wood to be below these lines right here, below the holes, excuse me. Touching a little bit on how much wood that it does use, I find it to be that it does really efficiently burn through the wood, but sometimes it could be a lot. It could chew through your wood. So you could bring an entire bundle with you and it'll be gone in about 30 minutes. It can eat wood, seriously. But if you do keep it more open like this with the top ring off, I've noticed that wood lasts a little bit longer inside of here. It's an efficient burn. When secondary burn is ignited, it really really chews through your wood quickly but when you take your top ring off like I have now I'm still getting smoked out so that the whole thing of the smokeless fire pit doesn't exactly work when the top ring is off another thing that I've noticed is that whenever I take this camping I never want to use it in the morning because if I have to pack up and leave camp I have to wait for this thing to cool down and on average it takes around 30 to 45 minutes for it to fully cool down and be at a temperature that I can touch it, flip it over and dump all the ashes out without igniting an entire forest fire. And speaking of forest fires, I can't use this in California for about 6 to 8 months out of the year. That's when the brush is too dry and they completely ban wood fires. 
as this thing begins to heat up and get extremely hot, again, from my, about my knees up, there's a couple other things that I like to say when it comes to cooking on this thing. I don't exactly recommend cooking on it because if you do, you're most likely going to burn the living crap out of your food and it's just going to be black. And that's the truth of it because this burns hot and it burns straight up. So unlike cooking on a regular open fire where you can kind of tell what it's going to be like, this is going to cook extremely fast, extremely hot, and unless you're really careful, your food's going to be burnt very, very quickly. That's just something to keep in mind. You might be an expert chef and I don't know, but from my experience cooking hot dogs over this thing, your hot dogs are A, usually smoked out because of just shooting all the smoke straight up, and B, they burn very quickly without fully cooking through the inside of the hot dog. Sometimes this shoots out pieces of wood just like that when it pops, and it is extremely hot, and for some reason it always comes towards my face. I don't know why it's always after me, but it is, and as you can see through my chair, it's burned multiple holes through my chair. It's burned through my jeans. It's burned through my sweaters. I don't know if this is just something that happens with the solo stove, but I've never had this happen with a wood fire as often as it does with the bonfire. At the end of the day, I just wanted to make this video and put it out there that I think that there's better options for $300. Heck, right now that could buy you three full tanks of gas, or it could buy you a full tank of gas and a Campco portable fire pit that runs on propane and a propane tank and a propane line. I just think that there's better options out there than the solo stove bonfires. So that being said, if this is exactly what you're looking for, go ahead and buy it because it does work great for what it is. If you want an enclosed fire pit that burns wood, it burns it quickly and it burns it hot, it does do a good job. But if you're using this in cold weather to go camping and you want to keep your legs warm, this is not what you want to buy. Trust me. Hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you found it any part useful, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. The next video is going to be covering a Carly pin top full system with radius arms for the Ram 2500. It's going to be an awesome video and there's going to be a lot of camping videos coming up soon. So I hope you guys enjoy this one and I'll see you all in the next one. Peace.